that's a burning topic today. And I started from the United Nations to uh, the small scale industries today, they all talk about global warming. We understand the consequence and repercussion of global warming. Uh, we have few students who participate during the course of our presentation. But today I'll just take five minutes where I'll take you through evolution. What is evolution? So that you get a fair idea. And how evolution is interlinked with global warming today. Now when we move on, move on to the topic like evolution. Evolution is that branch of biology or that branch of science which mainly deals some concerns with uh, with a story about how from single, simple, unicellular and acellular living organism we have transformed over a period of millions and millions of years into the most complicated multicellular organism called as man. Right? Now evolution, if you ask me who is the father of evolution, going by the books and the records, Charles Darwin, Darwin is a kind of father of evolution. Yes, he performed the theory, the theory of survival of the fittest. But paradoxically, there are a lot of other evolutionists who also came up with a lot of theories like Lama, Wesman, okay, and a uh, lot of other evolutionists, they have come with theories. Now, how exactly is evolutionists come up? Uh, there are two approach to evolution. One is a biotic approach and one is a non-biotic approach. When we say a biotic approach, we are talking about how life started. How the five different, uh, I would say, five different classes, when we categorize animals or organisms, we categorize it in the form of taxonomic status or nomenclature. So there is something when we talk about phylum, subphylum, okay, genus, okay, there is something called as class. So we have five classes. We start with the first class. What is the first class? Give me an idea. It would be the Pisces. Pisces. The fishes are called as the first. They were the first uh, to come onto this planet. Okay, going by the biotic uh, philosophy or the biotic hypothesis which has been founded by Charles Darwin. The first class, the first animal which came, or the first organism which came was fishes. Now before we go further, that's a very interesting story. It's just like a grandfather talking to his grandchildren. Okay, how? How does it really relate? Now, the first fish did not just born out of nowhere. There were a lot of phytoplanktons, there were a lot of zooplanktons from where there were a lot of e-wires. These are micro, nano, microscopic organism which has evolved over a period of millions of years. So the first fish which was into the aquatic environment, they started thriving, the population started thriving in a big number. Why? Because they were a very, very important thing. They had enormous amount of food, they had enormous amount of oxygen, which was dissolved in a molecular form. Okay? And third most important thing, they could continue their generation in terms of reproduction. Now what happened? Let's take an example of This part being the land and this tree part being water. Let's take a piece of the cake and consider it as a pond where the fish is one trying. Now what happened when the population was, was rising in a geometric progression and the food production was in arithmetic progression? Then what happened? A lot of fishes, the smaller fishes can get extinct. Why? As per Gregor John Mendel, father of genetics, he said dominant animals will be always yes. <coughs> thriving okay, over the recessive characters. So smaller fishes, they found it was very really difficult for them to collect food to survive. Just like you take a small family here, where you find there are some students, they will not be able to talk. They will be dominated by other students. Okay? So the small fishes, they understood that it's high time we move on from the water towards the land. So what happened? The first fish which made a migration and they stayed there for very few seconds. Nanoseconds. 10 to the power minus 9. Why? What was the first problem? The problem was oxygen. So what they did? They understood that they cannot breathe onto the land because they were surviving here by the hippogills. 
Okay. So what they thought that yes, we need to modify our respiratory organs. They understood this, and that carried on down their generation. And our, 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 after a lot of generations, then there was a fish which started really coming onto the land, staying there for some time, and again going back for reproduction for Absolutely. continuation of the species. Right? Now, now you may wonder and ask me a question, that, sir. You are telling all this. This is a hypothesis. Do you have an evidence about it? What I am telling is what Jay, uh, Charles Darwin told the same thing. He said yes. Today also we have some fishes, and they are called as the fishes. They have something called as take. Imagine have a wide imagination that this is a fish, and you find they will have. Something called as swim bladder. So this swim bladder was the lungs which was kept off. Okay, outside the body. Okay, this just like maybe the people who develop submarine got an idea. So when they inflate it, they come over to the water, and when they constrict it, they go deep inside the water. So till today we have fish that are called lung fishes, and this is the fish which shows that the fish is really. Okay. Now, after oxygen problem was solved, then what was the next problem they had? To locomote, to move. So fishes used to move inside the water by using their fins. They were small fish can do it. But what the interesting part is how the fishes started moving onto the land. So their fins got modified into limbs. And after after fishes, the next class that comes in evolution are called as. Amphibians. Amphibians great means both. Those stay in land as well as in water. So amphibians really solve the problem of oxygen. They really solve the problem of uh, movement and grabbing food. The third most important thing was reproduction. The fishes were more comfortable getting inside the water and laying out their eggs. Okay. Let's come to amphibians now. In amphibians. What is called is a little kind of seeds. For breathing a little bit, they will come to the land, and then you find a polar bear sandy to hunt it. So they cannot stay more than 15 minutes inside the water. They need to come out and breathe. So seeds or amphibians, particular crocodile, like you see. Okay. Now, uh, anyway, so amphibians, you know. Now this amphibians when the population started growing up onto the land because they were getting oxygen, they were getting food. Population is starting to grow. Now, then after amphibians, which is the next? Anybody has an idea? After amphibians, we have not reached the mammals yet. So reptiles. Reptiles. Fantastic. God bless. Okay. So we have some people as reptiles. What is called the Jurassic Park? The movie was made because a time was there when the dinosaurs were the king of the animal kingdom. Today, who is the king of the animal kingdom? Bajaj is the king of the animal kingdom. I am the king of the animal kingdom, right? Yes, sir.
Mahmoud. 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 Yes, Mahmoud. 